Okay, we're back. We're live. Here it is at 5 p.m. on a given Thursday here in Honolulu. And we're talking to our old friend Karthi Mishra in Varanasi, India, which is not too far from the northern border, the northeastern border of India. And he's a student there. I think he's still a student. When, when are you going to graduate already? Hmm? Karthi, you should be graduating. Uh, well, exams are there in March. So after exams, one semester still left. So um, a semester is left in my graduation. Okay. Yeah, he's a business student, but he follows everything yeah. in the world and we follow him. Okay. And Karnicki, there's a lot to come. We haven't talked for a while. There's a lot to compare notes about. I'm really interested in your thoughts, your reactions, and, you know, the, the thoughts and reactions of other Indian people that you deal with about what's going on. And the first thing that caught my eye, of course, was the farmers protest uh, in India. Mm. You, got, you got hundreds of thousands of farmers I don't know if it's still going on, but it was a couple of days ago where they're out of the roads and they're and they're protesting the lack of uh, what farm supports uh, that Narendra Modi has put in place. Uh, can you talk about it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. First of all, um, the protest is about three bills which uh, now have been passed and have become acts. And these three bills were something these farmers were concerned about. Uh, the first bill was about the uh, uh, how how the government procured this wheat or this grain from the farmers. The second bill was about the minimum price which the government used to pay to the farmers. And the third bill was for the holding of the commodities. So these were three bills or issue of contention. And uh, past two months, these protests were going on peacefully. But but I think uh, that this this uh, this can be solved through dialogue. Government has gone through eleven rounds of dialogues with the farmers, and yet uh, there is no solution. But I seriously hope that a peaceful way we can solve that. And unfortunately, few of the people I won't call them protesters. I won't call them farmers. Uh, went to the red fort and did something they should not do. The the protest. Uh, what was People back then became violent, and and these people were not protesters. I I don't have any sympathy with them. I have my sympathy with farmers, but but not with the people who who made a show on Red Fort. So that was very unfortunate. Well, then now that was uh, let's let's break that down a little bit. The um, the farmers uh, were they right uh, when they started protesting? They were complaining about the lack of um, supports for farmers, which we have in this country too. Um, but Narendra Modi uh, wanted to make it a free market. You're a business student, so you probably have an opinion about whether that would make a free market and whether a free market in agriculture would be a good idea for agriculture in India. What do you think about that? Definitely. Like uh, what I personally believe that uh, at, at some point, some of the issues of the farmers, what they were talking about were right. Yes. Everyone can have some concern, have some uh, issues with the bill. But what I personally think about the bill is that free market, you uh, bring a partial type of free market or this, these reforms were basically for benefit of farmers. But the thing is, free market brings a lot of challenge. Uh, like a government is there to support, but when you make a market free, so the things are on their own. The supply and demand decide everything. So this is the concern of the farmers that if if the privatization happens or the private companies are involved in this sector, uh, there could be problems about the problem about a oligopoly or a monopoly which companies can have. So this is the concern what farmers have. But my personal say is that the uh, kind of reforms are needed. To raise the agricultural income, some reforms are needed. So uh, we we want a middle path where uh, reforms can be also possible and farmers can also agree. So why did uh, why did uh, Narendra Modi uh, put these uh, put these changes in place? What was he seeking to do? How how um, how does he feel that these changes would benefit the country? Well, well, uh, uh, the these bills talk about. The, like uh, there were systems in 1970s according to the farmers, which which uh, which made that in case 
procurement of wheat or commodities could be directly done through government and and that wheat was then uh, circulated throughout the country and a minimum price was paid to the farmers obviously that uh, like uh, per quintal this was the sum of which is that that's the price from the side of the government before the procurement mm -hmm. so the thing is uh, modi government uh, wanted to turn this into a private market like a uh, Uh, there will be MSPs. There will be no change. He assured, but the people or the farmers were not agreeing on that because they, they didn't have that trust. That if private sector is involved, why, why, uh, why government would regulate the prices? So this was the type of concern they had. Now this wasn't what, all what over what India. What would have yeah. done was that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one minute, one minute. Let me conclude. Yeah, yeah. These, these bills were kind of good. If you look in in a large perspective, in the bigger picture, these bills are good. I, I personally believe that. But I think the few of the concerns of farmers are right. That how you can regulate these prices in the free market. So there are few concerns, but I I overall see this bill in a positive way. That's my view. Okay. Um. Now this this took place. This has taken place. The protest. In only one area of India, I forget the name of the area, um, and then it spread. Is that what happened? And how many how many farmers, how many people are involved in the protest? Oh, uh, I think um, thirty seven farmer leaders are there in this whole 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 stuff. Well, what is going on? So thirty seven farmer means thirty seven small unions and committees of who were. Leaders of farmers, so you can imagine a lot number of people are involved. So is well, key is this system what I talked about? That key uh, Monday system and the MSP. These were mostly done in the northern states of Punjab and Haryana, and and uh, and these states benefited from them. These these laws were kind of good for them. So, but the thing is, when these laws change the stuff, the uh, the there are some issues for the farmers which they bring up. Like how how um, state or the central government can decide this whole of this, stuff. right? And the there was a lot of tension between the government itself. Uh, a, coll a collision party was there, which uh, left the uh, collision or the left the alliance because of this bill. What I think uh, a middle way is possible. I personally hope that a middle way is possible uh, on this bill. So. Uh... What is the middle way that you feel would work? Well, suspend the bill for few years. Suspend the bill for few years. Talk with farmers that what are the issues they need to resolve, and then all the suggestions are taken into consideration. Implement those suggestions into that bill, and then again pass it. The farmers are demanding that uh, repeal the bills right now. This is their demand. And the government is saying that uh, we won't repeal the bill. We will just rectify the bill. You can understand that we will amend the bills through the parliament, but we won't repeal them. And this is the point of contention: that mm -hmm. farmers are not re uh, ready to accept anything less than repealing the laws. And the government is they are talking about rectification, so, uh, a dead a deadlock kind of situation is there. And mm -hmm. that is the way I think. We must suspend the bill for few years. Government also said that suspend the bill and talk about the bill. After that, we can see it. That's the most possible way we can find this solution to this bill. Yeah. How long has the protest been going on? Sixty-five uh, days, two months. Oh, two months. Uh, two has, months. has it been a yeah. peaceful protest? Yeah, till till twenty-sixth of January, it was very peaceful. Everyone had to be. But what happened on twenty sixth of January uh, changed a lot of uh, views on this particular thing. Now, you, can you describe the uh, Republic who were Day? Involved in violence. Karthikey, can you can you describe Republic Day? Yeah, That's yeah. The, that was the twenty sixth. What is that in India? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, India became independent in nineteen forty seven, right? So we made our constitution in nineteen forty five. Or uh, sorry, I. My nineteen constitution was complete, and we implemented that constitution on twenty sixth of January nineteen fifty. We became a republic on that particular day. 
to celebrate that occasion we celebrate this republic day on every 26th of january so on 26th of january this all stuff of violence happened uh, the thing was that uh, the government the farmers were asking for the protests in delhi firstly they were on the suburban regions and the outskirts of delhi but they wished that on 26 that they will do a, some kind of protest in delhi government allowed it as it is a democracy government allowed it but some of the people or who didn't have well intention uh, became the part of this and i personally believe they are not farmers don't forget problems and they took over the uh, this protest and turned into turned it into whole violence uh, 400 people were wounded no one was dead thankfully that i'm very glad that police also showed the strain and they storm into red falls uh, you can see that iconic building in india most of the times and a few of the people raised a flag a religious flag i don't want to take the name of that community so this was the whole issue that that uh, a protest is only supported when it uh, follows the peaceful way when it becomes anti national or it tries to become something against the nation people don't support it as a democracy i allow protest and i believe that everyone has a right but no one has a right to turn it into violence and uh, speaking against the nation or against the nation. so uh, in the red fort uh, what are the protesters there these questionable protesters what are they seeking what are they demanding what do they want well they weren't demanding uh, the protesters on the prior hand on 25th agreed that they will pr peacefully protest in delhi they will do a, a tractor rally that they will sit on tractors and do a rally kind of thing but some of these people who were i think not part of this or who were uh, kind of i should say belonging to some part other political ideology turned into, into violent and they stormed the red force it was not their designated area of protest you can understand that they broke they broke that code broke that agreement and they stormed the red fort. and after storming that red fort they raised that flag on it and everything else they did uh, 400 people were wounded but the thing is that somehow things are under control and now things are looking good that uh, we can do stuff that I personally believe that we, we can control the situation. And uh, uh, Republic Day, is, you can understand that it's a kind of celebration, like you have 4th of July. It's it's a kind of celebration and something like that happens on that particular day. Very unfortunate, I think. So that was the whole of it. That's my take on that. And I yeah. personally say it again, that uh, I have sympathy for farmers, but what, what people did on Red Force, I have no sympathy for them. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, figure out how that works in India. Would you say that people in India are generally patriotic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone is patriotic, and and the uh, the uh, every single community, not just one, every single person, like belonging to religion, belonging to. Uh, and, and, it's not like that. Key uh, things turned out that way. Now, these special protesters, these um, aggravated protesters at the Red Fort, were they, were they taking steps to try to bring the government down? Uh, what exactly did they have in mind and what, what do they want to achieve by taking over the Red Fort? Well, um, like you can see now, uh, trampling the symbols of democracy was something I would like to interpret it as. I won't say it was a coup against the government, but it's simply was a kind of, part of trampling the democracy. Red Fort is the place where uh, Prime Minister gives speeches on every independence day. That's 15th of August. So it's a kind of symbol of democracy. Only re uh, uh, national flag is allowed there. Protesters kind of placed a flag parallel to the national flag. I won't take the name, but it was kind of hurting the sentiments of uh, people across India because that's, that's not something acceptable. That you can't place a flag of some other nation or some uh, other person in in capital hill that's the way that how people interpret it as well, so people not sympathy as well but i personally yeah you, you say that 400 people were uh hurt who hurt them was were there yeah. two factions here 
uh, uh, protesting against no, each other? These, hmm, uh, these 400 people were policemen who were trying to make things or take the situation under control. And the people who attacked were these protesters, uh, these, uh, I should say, so-called farmers. I would say, they, I won't have any sympathy for this. These so-called farmers uh, took, took some violent actions. They started attacking police and everything, but police showed a lot of restraint towards farmers and no one was hurt from their side. It was mm. police that actually got hurt. Mm. So what the big question for me, Kordaki, is um, this was 10 days, just 10 days, a little more than a week, after the United States had the insurrection uh, in its uh, national capitol building. Um, do you think that, um, that the insurrection in the United States somehow uh, generated the protest in, in the Red Fort? Uh, I don't know the what mentality of the protesters had, what they were thinking. But uh, uh, when I looked the whole incident happening, that was something I, I, I got reminded of, that it was similarly looking to what happened in uh, US capital. Like you can understand how, how, how what people, like how hurting it could be that uh, something, a symbol of democracy is being trampled upon in the name of protest. This is something not acceptable. That's my view on it. As yeah. How does how does the rest of the country feel about it? I I guess from what you say that uh, most people in India do not approve of what of what happened of the protests at Red Fort. Exactly, exactly. Most of the people uh, supported the farmers because they were peaceful and uh, protest is right in a democracy. In any any great democracy, you have right to speak. You have right to protest. So, so these farmers are, and I also have sympathy for them. That they are protesting, and I'm with them. They are the people. They are my brothers. They are my, uh, you can say, countrymen. So, but what what happened on Red Fort kind of, uh, I should say, tarnished the image of this whole protest. Like hmm. the protest, which was peaceful, turned into something anti-national. At least that's the image what was formed, and lot of people started now speaking against it. They, there are uh, protesters still outside Delhi. Uh, there has been no such, uh, I should say, um, removal of these protesters from outside Delhi. There are protesters outside. But the thing is that uh, people have changed their views on it. Now people are slightly turning their views. Because in these protesters, there are some people who are a bit anti national and have different thinking apart from the protest. So um, did the farmers go home? No, that's still, still there. They're still outside Delhi, and uh, I personally hope that situation gets resolved easily. And I, I, I hope that because some uh, I have sympathy for farmers, but uh, they have to distinguish between um, people who were who were not with them, who who kind of did some act. So uh, that's the thing. Yeah. Did, uh, did, did the government arrest anyone? Is there anyone in jail over what happened uh, at Red Fort? Uh, the 33 FIRs are there, I basically believe. The 33 FIRs are there against farmer leaders. Kind of, I should say, uh, directly or indirectly involved. I don't know the name of every single person. But the thing is that government is trying to hold someone accountable that who was that person that who did all that stuff on Red Bull. And the thing is, it, it is now getting a bit complicated. So I would like to speak less on that. Something okay. Like that. Well, let the me go back. The and... government and between the farmers, I hope. Mm -hmm. Continue. Let me go, let me go back and, um, and ask you uh, about something that you and I have touched on before, and that is... Uh, you know, what the people in India, what do you feel, what they feel, what is the general feeling about Trump? And um, of course we had, I'm sure everybody in the world knows a, an election on November 3rd that Trump did not agree with. Uh, and he claimed that he won, even though all the certified ballots showed that uh, Joe Biden won. Um, and then he took many, many steps to try to overturn that election and the Republicans 
members of the Republican Party, Hither and Yan, all over the country joined with him in his attempts to overturn the election. Um, and then, uh, and that culminated in the January 6th uh, insurrection at the Capitol. And I wonder how you feel about that, because, you know, India is a democracy. We, we treasure all democracies. And I know that you and everybody really in India treasures the notion of democracy. It's a, it's a wonderful thing that we share with you. Um, but I wonder how you feel about what happened with Trump and his uh, actions to contest an election uh, where he lost. Oh, that was very unfortunate thing. Like you can say that U.S. is kind of a symbol of democracy in this world. That is being said. That being said, that U.S. is something who supports democracy. Uh, what happened on Capitol Hill, uh, I should say, vanished that whole notion of democracy in the United States. It was looking like a coup in United States itself. First, people are trying to overthrow their own government. So that was the whole thing that how uh, something like that can happen in a developed nation like United States. It was looking like a turn or a coup in, in a Middle Eastern country or in a dictatorship that you can imagine that the images of Capitol Hill, people climbing on that and uh, people were dead, five people were dead, I believe. So it was something very unacceptable that how uh, this could happen in the United States. People were in awe, like, uh, well, it's, it's very unfortunate. And these were the sentiments that people had in India. That no matter how worse the situation is in India, after every election, no matter how the strong government is, the, the power which lost legitimately chooses to turn over the administrators to the next government and it keeps on happening. No such thing has happened in India. In past, one such incident was, but after that, since now, no such thing has happened. So it was something that we are proud of, that as a democracy, we never showed any such immature behavior or such kind of behavior through these 70 years. So this is something that I can say probably that in my democracy, that stuff like this doesn't happen. Mm. So uh, people in India generally uh, feel, um, believe that Joe Biden was the winner and that uh, Trump's exactly. claims were false. Yeah, exactly. Uh, on third, it was decided that Trump lost. It, it was very clear as that. And by December, it became clear that when the... Uh, uh, decisions of Georgia and other states were out, that in every single state he has won that. But President Trump kept on insisting, or I should say former President Trump kept on insisting that he is the winner. So this behavior was not accepted, and this is not seen positively in any single day. Uh, democracy. It go to India, it go to Japan, it go to Korea. In any single democracy, such kind of behavior is not acceptable, at least from the president. Uh, that to staying in power, how can someone fall so low that uh, uh, a, a kind of cool situation happens in U.S. itself? I think it's yeah. the first time something like that happened in U.S. Yeah, oh, sure. So I'm very sad. So now, now we have Biden, and he's, a, I'm sure you, you've seen him and, you know, heard what he has to say and following in the last week or so uh, all his attempts that reverse some of the things, many of the things that Trump was doing. And you've seen his style, you've seen his cabinet people because you know he lets them speak. Um, I, I'm really interested in your, in your feeling about him. What, he's different, obviously. He's 180 degrees different than Trump. Um, how, how do you like him? What, what's your thought about him? <laughs> well, first of all, I would like to congratulate him that he became and, and uh, Kamala Harris as well. She became the uh, as well. So the thing is, it, uh, it says something about that, the United uh, States, doesn't it, Karnaki? It's not someone who. It it says something about the United yeah, States. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we we have we have Kamala Harris. That's that's an important point. Mm. Uh, uh, Joe Biden is no uh, is a very familiar person with. I think he has been a vice president and he has worked with him in past as well. 
so we have uh, a knowledge that how biden administration would work like we have a kind of him as you can say that we have some uh, familiar sense with biden he was vice president with president obama and we have worked with him in past and that's my hope that current government is very willing to work with mr biden and and that's my hope that uh, in future that we will have a lot of cooperation better than president donald trump he was kind of a you can say unstable bit unstable you uh, think the you think that india president. you think that india will have a better relationship with the united states under biden well uh, on many issues yes that on issues or h1b visa the immigrants that we will have some co- coordination i think we will have some coordination uh, on uh, oil as well that us had imposed sanctions on iran and that was under president trump uh, i think president biden will relax that and there are many other issues that i think we will have normalization again with united states yes uh, every new administration brings up some uh, uh, challenge so we have also something in mind that how nice one big issue that uh, opinion of biden government on china will decide uh, many things that how politically uh, we will work with united states because china is an issue china is a major issue so one one thing i really want to ask you is this you know you, you've seen and the people in india and you we've talked you know a number of times believe believe in democracy it's important to you you're proud of it you're happy the way it works for you people in general support it this is uh, one one of the one of the world's great democracies india and it it is sustainable it keeps going and and the transfer of power is done seamlessly and people are respectful and so forth So now you've seen the United States go through a convulsion. You've seen uh, a, a coup essentially attempted by our own president. You've seen our own citizens, um, you know, violate the heart of our government. Um, and I want, and then you, you know, you see this dramatic change between administrations, where one one administration does all these crazy things. the next one comes in tries to fix it up you see one administration is tearing up relationships in the world another one tries to fix them up it it doesn't it doesn't suggest that the united states is as reliable as you thought as as constant um a, a partner as you thought and i wonder you know how people feel i mean there was one writer in ireland who said the best word for it is pity he pities the united states for all the trouble that it has had over the past couple well four years um and i wonder how people in india feel about that you know do they hold us in less regard now do they do they feel we are less reliable than we were um do they feel that we are operating under an impediment that they hadn't noticed before well yes certainly that you talked about that uh, how unfortunate that was that something like uh, a kind of coup happened in us so after after seeing all that turmoil after seeing all that un- instability in four, this is the thing that in international politics one thing became pretty clear uh, you can't rely on someone have to work with president. the thing is i have to give credit to my government right now that this government worked with president obama this government somehow managed to work with donald trump successfully and uh, and this is the beauty of democracy of mature democracy that no matter what kind of administration sits in in the power whether in united states or in india the ability of a democracy is to work together in no matter what kind of situation prevails are in the world so this is one thing which i think uh we all learned that such stuff is true and it certainly uh, made uh, some damage to the image of us but i am very hopeful that biden administration will correct that he will fix it i, I hope so I, i personally believe that biden administration will be able to do that yes i i'm with you on that completely i like to think that this uh, that the trump administration was just an aberration it is not what happened under him is not the real united states 
um, because we are moral and we care about our citizens and we want to do the right thing and we want to have a, 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 a kind and gentle relationship with our government and we want our government to be kind and gentle with us. And for a time, we didn't have that. Maybe we will have that again. Uh, see, what I worry about is that democracy is fragile. It's tenuous. There isn't much of it going on in the world these days. And we have to protect it and preserve it. We have to um, keep it. And uh, so uh, I feel a kinship to uh, India and other democracies. And I, I worry for them. And I, I guess uh, what I want them to do is, is learn from what happened on January 6th so that it doesn't happen again anywhere else and it doesn't threaten any other democracies. That's why I'm concerned about what happened uh, in your red fort on January 26th. How do you feel about that? Well, generally, uh, Red Fort incident was kind of protest. It was not turning the overthrowing the government. Uh, it's very fortunate that every single government was, no matter how strong or weak they were, they respected the thing that they have lost the election or they have won the election, and they they kind of uh, accepted this whole scenario as as the mandate from the people that people are not willing to have them as a leader. In 2024, if this Prime Minister Modi goes out of power, if, if that happens, he will also gradually accept it, that he is, he is the Prime Minister with the majority, and he will have to accept that if something like that happens. So in a democracy, transition and change is the only thing, no matter how well uh, the government is or how well the uh, president is. Change is the only thing which is possible in democracy. In the democracy and outside the democracy, change is the only thing constant. That's my view on that. Yes, I totally agree. It's all about change because the world is changing faster now than it ever did. And government has to change along with the world. It has to change with the, the way the people in the country are changing. So let me ask you one last question before we have to go, Kariki. You know, you are, you are very Akamai, that's a Hawaii word, right? Akamai means wise, um, about, um, you know, uh, Indian affairs and, and uh, Indian issues and events. And I wonder if, you know, with your business degree and your training um, and, you know, coming from Varanasi and all, whether you could ever be involved in politics, whether you would ever consider running for office, participating in the national national government <laughs> uh, well i am an ambitious person if i ever got a chance to become prime minister i would surely do because i'm not gonna hide it that it's very good to be ambitious if i ever got a chance i would not i know julius caesar or <laughs> who said that i turned down the crown for three times <laughs> i will take that crown but the thing is uh, how we work in a democracy is something that uh, i believe that in every single democracy, you have to work with the people, with the opposition and the foreign country. That's my view that over this time I have learned, in a democracy, the only thing which can protect you is dialogue. If you are willing enough to talk with people, to talk with opposition, to talk with uh, in people in general on any, any issue, dialogue is the only way which can save you, which can protect you, and which can guide you towards future. Democracy is not about conflict, it's about conversation. That's my whole view on that. A uh, uh, prime minister who is willing to talk and resolve issues is someone people will accept. So that kind of prime minister I would like to be if I became other. Okay, um, I will definitely vote for you, Karaki. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Karaki Mishra. Joining us from Varanasi, India. We'll talk to you again soon, Kartiki. Stay well. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Aloha.